Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This better not turn into some weird shit like a uh, woman passes out, gets amnesia, and then some guy is nice to her and then they start developing feelings for each other or some shit. Besides, it's Nina, right? Like, don't even, don't even try it, bro. Don't even try it, you NPC looking, motherfucking looking ass, okay? Like, don't even. You're gonna have to get through me first, you dumbass, plain ass looking, motherfucking looking ass. You need to have at least, at least some sort of identifying factor about your character for me to take you seriously and actually allow it to happen. Allow you to even speak to Nina, okay? Don't even try it, bro. Yo, what you doing? You here for some monster? Yeah, yeah, I know, yep. So am I. Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to some more monster. Episode 56, we are getting closer and closer to, I think, what will be a confrontation between, uh, maybe five people. All the big major players. Because of what happened last episode. Recap time. Basically, the lawyer guy and his father had this notebook that we found, and inside the notebook were, well, encrypted messages or, or notes uh, detailing names and and probably places and things um, having to do with maybe Franz Bonaparte and at the same time either Roberto or, or Johan sent Tenma a message inviting him to the Red Rose Mansion where Ava is supposedly kidnapped too maybe now we don't actually know this for a fact because we didn't actually see Ava get kidnapped or anything, so it could be just a could just be bait. Not gonna lie, but unfortunately, Tenma doesn't have much choice. So I'm guessing this episode we're gonna go straight to the Red Rose Mansion and and maybe have a confrontation between Tenma, Roberto, Ava, Lunge, and Johan. We don't really know yet if Johan is involved, honestly. Maybe. But who knows? In any case, let's get right into episode 56 of Monster. June 19th, my first meeting with Franz Bonaparte. RF 17-9. He was a very quiet man. He was graceful, dressed in a suit. In the afternoon, the children gathered for a book reading mansion with red roses. Pete Prevnuf W. A steeple on the left, a weather vane on the right. Human dignity. Experiments. Amazing experiments. Deprivation of dignity. Here you go. Leftover from my lunch today. You're very kind, but I'm fine. Eat! You look like you're about to collapse from hunger any minute now. Ha! <laughs> go on. I sure don't need it. My wife's been nagging me to lose weight. Thank you. I appreciate it. When you start a long journey, you've got to have something in your stomach or you won't last till the end. I'm not gonna lie. I would never eat... I would I would never eat that. Not because it's a burger or anything. I fucking love burgers. I, I would never eat something that someone, someone, someone random just gave me. You know? What if there's, like something in there even if it's wrapped up in in like something that kind of looks legitimate I, I i would never eat anything some random person gave me have to end it soon. now you might say yeah well there's no way they could have known that you were uh hitchhiking and then they just picked you up right it's like yeah but on the other hand they could have a situation where maybe maybe they travel all the time maybe they drive this road all the time and they've seen other hitchhikers and maybe they're a serial killer that uh picks people up and then uh gives them food they pass out because of it and then they get kidnapped right like i would i i don't know maybe i'm just paranoid but i just don't trust people especially i don't trust people that give me food this long journey if they pay for my food then sure right but if they give me food that they've prepared, 
Then I don't, uh, then I'm definitely not taking that food. The never-ending journey. You let him leave? You just watched as Tenma walked away? Yeah. Why didn't you stop him? Well, you of all people should know that you can't stop Tenma. But you should have tried. On top of which, with Ava Heinemann missing, our case is in dire straits anyway. Tenma escaped from jail because he feared for her safety. That lawyer who called himself Ball. Most likely the same man who tried to murder me in my clinic because I knew too much. And obviously, his most recent agenda was to get close to me to steal my father's notebook. Let's go then. Where? To where you're thinking Tenma's headed. Oh. Mansion. How I honestly thought the lawyer was done for last episode. Like, he, he went to his family, his child. I thought he was like giving up the case because, because he was like, hey, I gotta focus on my own family, that kind of thing. How can we find it? But I guess not. It might be easier than we think. My father's notes were full of odd symbols and cryptic codes, but I don't think that was a code. The Red Rose Mansion, followed by P. Brevnov W. Look, I'm sorry I admonished you for letting Tenma just take off like that. If I had been standing there face to face with him, I'm sure I would have done the exact same thing. So, let's go. Okay, we have some allies, hopefully. Here. Once I used to live in this town. And I... Oh yeah, this happened as well I'm some time ago. I'm sure I'll start to remember. My brother talked to me back then and told me what happened. How he was taken away from the three frogs, what he noted when he left town and where he went. Past the train station. The town on the left, beside the river, driving alongside a trolley. <gasps> Turn right here, please. We can't have that. <gasps> Keeping secrets from him is definitely a no-no. <gasps> what the fuck? Right. What the fuck was that? <sighs> I'm so confuzzled. Is she, like, remembering things that she went through now? But I thought she wasn't the one who got taken. I feel like I'm still missing some sort of big piece of the puzzle. It's nothing, really. Yeah, I think that's nothing. There was a Skeletor guy in the in the car. Admitted it's hopeless. It was a long time ago. Shut the fuck up, kid. Everything. I mean, he's not wrong, but still, you know, shut the fuck up, kid. No one asked you. That's a big cock. Vein on the right. Oh, Red Rose Mansion, right? Oh, uh, Nina's... Oh my god, Nina's gonna get there as well, isn't, isn't she? Nina! Red Rose Mansion. All right, so we're gonna have six people, maybe. And the door is just open. Like, so this is it? do they not have locks in this time? It's like every door is just open. I've been here before. Well, okay, so Nina has also been here before. I, <sighs> dude, I'm so confused. Nina and Johan are not the same person. We've confirmed this multiple times, and yet they keep making me think that they might be the same person, except they can't be because we've literally proven that they aren't. Which means something else must have happened. I mean, Johan gets taken. You know, let's say Franz Bonaparte uh, came, took away uh, the mother, and then took away Johan as well. They came here, Franz drew some some stuff like you know drew portraits of the mother being pregnant and stuff maybe that was before actually uh that was definitely before right and then the uh, twins were born and then the mother probably took them uh went to the the city or whatever or you know to live on on her own i guess with the with the twins 
and then maybe at some point Franz went took took Johan with him to the Red Rose Mansion and the uh, and the mother maybe did something to them I don't know but then someone came back someone who looked like Nina came back for Nina and then came and then maybe she was also taken here uh, I mean she says she's been here before This is definitely a place of all time. Yep. It looks like someone tore down that wall and found that door. I mean, there's definitely something with this with this room. I also I I'm reminded of that time when um Schuvalz went to try to find his uh you know his his margo margo langer right and then he met with the mother of the twins and then the twins were like creepy looking right indicating that they were already kind of fucked up even back then so i'm guessing maybe maybe they were born in the red rose mansion and then they were like brainwashed as as very young children and then by the time they went to live um with the mother in the three frogs they were already like brainwashed and fucked up and then you know shuvats gets there and they kind of look creepy and shit or something along those lines what the shit Nothing but an empty room. Uh, Nina? Nina? Let me let me see that again. I'm confused. This is like her younger self, right? So being surprised? And then this? And then this. Maybe Johan killed all these people with poison because they're all drinking, as you can see. Um, I don't know. Seems weird. Now die. <sighs> the demon has He's been dead. Slain. Who the fuck is this guy now? Like, yet, yet another new character that we've never seen before and somehow... How do you feel? Oh... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This better not turn into some weird shit like, uh, woman passes out, gets amnesia, and then some guy is nice to her and then they start developing feelings for each other or some shit. Like, fucking, uh, like those two characters in Code Geass, like, ooh, ooh, I, not a fan of that. Besides, it's Nina, right? Like, don't even, don't even try it, bro. Don't even try it, you NPC-looking, motherfucking-looking ass, okay? Like, don't even. I shall, I shall protect Nina. I shall protect. You're gonna have to get through me first, you dumbass ba plain ass looking motherfucking looking ass. You need to have at least, at least some sort of identifying factor about your character for me to take you seriously and actually allow it to happen. I'll allow you to even speak to Nina, okay? Don't even try it, bro. No, business was bad as usual. I don't know why they're such wonderful puppets. The one I'm making now is even better still. Listen, I'm sorry I've stayed here so long. I don't mean to impose on you. Oh no, don't worry about it. It's all right. Mr. Lipsky, there's something I want to ask you. What is it? Three months ago, 
You found me unconscious and took me to the hospital. Three months ago? I did. I was wondering, why were you at that mansion? Three months ago? Huh? Okay, so that must have happened way before, I think. Way before Tenma's situation with the prison and, well, not prison, but like, you know, imprisonment and stuff. I'm guessing. Because, yeah, they, they pretty much right after the fire, right? Nina met with uh, the, the doctor and she remembered something. She came immediately here and then started searching and went to the three frogs and stuff. And then right after that, now she she came here. Yeah, it I, makes sense, kind of. I think. Please, Nina! Nina! What's wrong? When I go to that mansion, images come to me that I use for my work. How should I put this? I, um... Now I found something more inspiring. This guy is very creepy. Why has she been here for three months? Can we like him? Not? I don't like this guy. Gives me the give, gives me the heebie jeebies. Something about him. He seems like a I don't want to say it, but serial killer. It's giving the serial killer vibes. What with the uh, with the uh, dolls and stuff. Oh, don't tell me you're making a fucking doll of her. Oh, ooh, that's... As the, you know, as people these days say, red flag. That's a big red flag right there. God. Don't say her name, you disgusting freak. Right if I come in? Well, of course it's all right. Are you sure you're well enough to be up and about? Uh -huh. Why is she here for three months? So your puppets are all born in this room. Yes, but I haven't found an audience that enjoys them. What is your puppet show about? It's about the tale of a demon. <gasps> What's wrong, Nina? Nothing, please continue. Maybe she knows that... Maybe she suspects this guy. And that's why she's hanging around. Like she's... Like, you know, she's trying to find information the demon is on a journey to find a dragon that will destroy the world but on his way he comes close to the brink of death a young man who is passing by sees him dying and acts quickly to save his life when the young man learns the true identity of the one he saved he chases after the demon at the end of his journey the young man finds the evil one and with a knife in his hand slays the demon i think it's an interesting story but audiences don't seem to like it it's an interesting story almost as if you didn't create it and someone else did i wonder who mm. are you okay nina i think if i were him i'd have done the same thing i would do precisely the same but i must not let him do that any person would have saved the demon's life if he could. You think so? There is someone who would probably appreciate this story more than anyone else. Who? He's on these shelves. They're all his picture books. Jakob Ferebeck, Klaus Pope, Emil Scherbe. The nameless monster. Why do I know? People can become whatever they want to be. Because I wasn't a superior pupil, I was thrown out of the book readings. The book readings? The superior pupil? Dude, this is, this is starting to sound like some sort of cult shit. Mr. Bonaparte used to be in charge of book readings, which were held at the Red Rose Mansion. I was a student at the mansion then. Every Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock, the children would gather together for a book reading. We would sit around him and listen as he read a book to us. Oh, he was one of the children. A kind voice, very calm and gentle. And that's when he brainwashed them all. And when he was finished reading the story, he would turn and ask us, 
the meaning of the story. Do you understand? I'm guessing Nina was also one of them. I understand. I also understood after many readings. It's as if I've come here for the first time. Although the journey's taken quite a while. And then there's him. All God damn Johan. The God of Peace was very busy. He was so busy playing the trumpet he didn't have time to look in the mirror. The trumpet that the God of Peace played made everyone very happy. He was so busy naming people he didn't have time to look in the mirror. Your name is Otto. Your name is Hans. Your name is Thomas. Your name is Johan. Johan gave the god his hat in appreciation. The god was very happy. He put the hat on and looked in the mirror for the first time. But what he saw was a demon. The demon inside the mirror said, You are me and I am you. What should I do? No one can live happily with the demon here. Do you know what the god does? I know. I figured it out. Do you know? Do you know what that god did after that? Went and played around a fortnight. I know for sure. We finally meet. I'm back. Welcome home. It's me, mother. Even you can't tell us apart, can you? She is me and I am her. You are me and I am you. I understand everything now. Where we came from and where we're going. Where Isn't that a song? Wonderful, mother. You're not gonna... Burn down the house, are you? Oh. Everything <sighs> to go. <sighs> this fucking fucker, bro. Every single time there's some sort of lead, this fucking fucker comes and fucking burns down everything. Every goddamn time. Up in flames. Son of a little bitch. Dude, Johan, only bitches burn down houses, bro. You still gonna do it? You you a bitch? You a bitch? <laughs> you a bitch? Bro, only bitches burn down houses. Ah, <laughs> you're a bitch. You're a bitch. Bitches what? Yeah, he plays Fortnite, obviously. Or Minecraft. W what is she doing? Kamehameha? Oh. And points it at his forehead. Shoot me. Uh, Johan's a bitch, because, you know, I said, like, only bitches burn down houses. I feel like a lot of the storybook stuff, at the end of the day, is going to be irrelevant. Um, like, it's well, like, portrayed, and it makes things very mysterious and stuff. But at the end of the day, all I'm getting from this is Johan has some sort of god complex, where he, um... He like read a bunch of these stories or had the stories read to him and he essentially took on the persona of being this peaceful god and then he looks in the mirror and he's like oh my god i'm a demon so maybe the idea is like that uh johan is the demon and the peaceful god is nina supposedly and then at the same time you have this other story of uh you know that this this freaky guy is uh is playing out where 
you know, the monster meets this, uh, this person, the person saves the monster's life, uh, or the demons or whatever, and then, uh, goes on a journey himself to eventually kill the demon. Because I'm guessing that story is also created by Johan, or Franz, maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe Franz even, maybe Franz created, you know, this story, and the, he also created, uh, the story with, you know, the demon and the person who saves the demon, and then goes on to kill the fucking, uh, demon, right? And that's why he was like, uh, hey Nino, shoot me basically, shoot me in the head or whatever. And if I survive, then the person who who saved me will become the person that will go on to kill me, essentially. But then again, with that thought, we're kind of going to the, we're kind of going to the point of like Aizen from Bleach, right? If you, if you've ever seen Bleach, uh, basically where the villain is so like so far seeing that they can predict that okay you can shoot me exactly right over here in my head uh and then i'm going to be transported i'm still going to be alive for a while uh that super surgeon that i've heard of called tenma in this hospital that i'm going to be taken to will be able to save me because i can tell exactly how good he is i know that he he's going to make the correct decision to save me and then he he like predicts absolutely everything that will happen somehow and so on and so forth right like i don't think that's gonna happen it would be a little bit bullshit if it did but uh yeah i mean i definitely think that he's following these these storylines that were created maybe by franz but who knows uh, all i know is that people who burn down mansions are bitches because i said so but yeah regardless i hope you enjoyed episode 56 of monster i i mean <sighs> Now that Johan has burned down the Red Rose Mansion, all of a sudden, the place where I thought a big confrontation was going to happen is now just gone. Right? Like, all of a sudden, and this has kind of happened multiple times already, where I think they're going to have some sort of confrontation, but then Johan, it's, and this is kind of the, the thing that I just don't understand. Johan seemingly sets up some sort of like situation and then diffuses the situation as well before it even happens if we are to assume that johan told roberto to kidnap ava and send tenma the the little letter saying that hey come to red rose mansion why then burn down the the mansion before they even get there right like what's huh what who i mean maybe tenma's right maybe johan is just fucking with him because it doesn't make any sense to invite them there and then just burn down the house before they get there. Unless he needs it to be burned down somehow, for some reason. Ah, I don't know. The shit is getting confusing, bro. The shit is confusing. In any case, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you next time in the next episode of Monster. Until then. <laughs>